Hello and welcome to another video. So a few months ago I put out a video about some basic bike maintenance and in that video it showed me cleaning my drive chain and the resounding feedback from that video was that I needed to go wax. So I was quite hesitant at first because I know there's a lot of work and a lot of upfront, maybe a bit of upfront cost and time and effort that's put into doing a wax system. But after doing a bit of reading, a bit of research, I am fully committed to the cause. So this video here is gonna be a beginner's guide to waxing your bike by a beginner. Now, before I get further into the video, I've got two $100 99 bike vouchers that I'm gonna be giving away to someone in the comments. Why don't you comment below if you use wax, if you don't, and the reason for it. And I'll be announcing the winner on my on my announcements page on my channel and the reason for that is um, there's bots in the comment section that try to scam people and they'll tell you that you've won in the comments do not follow that you'll need to check back on my channel and i'll write who the winner is there so i'll put an announcement there stay tuned please subscribe so that you can keep track of that announcement another reason why i held off on switching the wax originally was because um, the current components that were on my bike i've been using for about maybe 10,000 kilometers. So they, they were really, they really needed to be replaced. And I was holding off on that because I didn't want to clean like a chain and a cassette and chain rings that I was about to throw away. So earlier this week, I went over to Michael's shop. Uh, I, I got a new chain ring, cassette, chain, and I've also got some new jockey wheels that aren't on the bike yet. Um, but everything is spick and span, brand new. And I'm really happy because I can just start from this brand new baseline of new components and I can see how effective the wax is, how long it lasts, and if I actually get more life out of my, um, out of my drivetrain components. So through various internet forums and things I've read, uh, people have claimed that you can get up to 15,000 kilometers out of a chain uh, by using the waxing method instead of going down the traditional lubricant method. And the reason for this is because when you use wax, uh, you don't have any metal on metal action. So the wax is meant to go between all the little cogs but on the chain and it's meant to prevent any wear and tear between the metal. Whereas if you use lube, there's still a lot of metal on metal action as well as the lube picks up pieces of dirt and sand and it kind of grinds it into an abrasive paste which wears away at your components a lot faster. So the first thing to do is I'm gonna set up my wax needs a bit of room. You know, you've got your crock pot, you need to hang up the dry chains and you need a bit of working room. So I've reclaimed my balcony area, which doesn't get used very much and I'm gonna do that. But first things first, I'm gonna to have to do a big clean up because this place is messy. So let's do it. I wanted to be upfront with all the costs of switching to wax. So here we go. The first thing you'll need is some turpentine and methylated spirits to degrease the chain and make it completely clean. Methylated spirits, four liters, just about 20 bucks from Bunnings. Mineral turpentine, four liters, about the same, $20. You'll need a chain breaker to open up your master link. Park tool, chain breaker, $30. Or oh, thirdly, you'll need some new chains and ideally you have two of these so you can swap between them. So I bought two Durace chains, 70 bucks each. The second one's on the bike. Next, you'll need your wax. So you can actually go with very cheap paraffin wax, but I've decided just to go creme de la creme and I got the secret chain blend from Silica and this was $65. And lastly, what you'll need is a slow cooker. So I picked this one up from Woolies for $25 now the key to the get good slow cooker and not using a rice cooker is it needs to have a low regulated heat. So this one has about 120 watts and that's just enough to keep your wax melted but not to burn it. And this is $25 from Woolworths. Not shown on the camera but I bought a big box as well, a 55 litre box from Bunnings just to store everything in. That was another 15 bucks. So all up this little experiment of mine is going to cost just over $300 and let's see how it goes. So the first step is you want to take your chain off. Obviously you can skip this if you've got a completely new chain. And I am putting these gloves on just so that I keep everything nice and clean. All right, so now we need to find the master link. Here it is here. And a good practice is to switch your front uh, gear to the smallest 
chain ring and your back one to the smallest there so that your derailleur is in its most relaxed position so it doesn't explode when you open it. So we'll do that now. As you can see, the derailleur is in the most relaxed position there. Our master link is here and we simply Okay, so the next step is we need to strip the chains of their factory grease. Now chains, just to protect them while they're stored, uh, while they're in transit, they have factory grease and which is terrible for adhesion for wax. So we need to strip that. Uh, also this chain that I just pulled off the bike, uh, this one has had not any uh, lubricant put on it, but it is a little bit dirty just because it's touched some mold or some other components and we want to get it completely clean. You need to put these in a bottle or an ultrasonic cleaner and with the lack of ultrasonic cleaner I thought why not better than repurpose this old protein gym bottle to use for this purpose. So here we go, one chain in, another chain in. I just remembered I need to take the master link off that other chain. So in they go into the bottle. And what we're going to do is we're going to pour some turpentine in there. We're going to shake it up. We're going to empty the turpentine out and then we're going to let it soak overnight in the turpentine, a new fresh batch of turpentine. Now the thing is turpentine is also terrible for wax. So that's where the methylated spirits comes in. Once we finish with the turpentine, we'll do another round with the methylated spirits that will clean off all the turpentine and then we'll be good to go for the wax. Let's get rid of this factory grease. Squeeze, cap, and turn open. Squeeze sides hard. There we go. I'm gonna put a healthy amount of turpentine in there. So I'm gonna shake this for about two minutes and you don't need to watch all of it. All right, I've just finished shaking the chains with the turpentine. I'm gonna pour fresh back turpentine in now and let it soak overnight. While we're waiting for that, let's do a couple of things. Let's unpack our new, brand new slow cooker and we'll also just give all the components on the bike one last clean. Let's get our wax out. And here's our slow cooker. There's a little lid. There's our ceramic inside bowl. Now that's got a capacity of one and a half litres. I've got half a kilo here of the wax. I won't fill it up all the way, just enough to submerge the two, the two chains and then I'll have some wax for, for later on if I ever need to do a top up. All right, so the two chains have been in the mineral terps overnight and it's time to clean off that terps using methylated spirits. So disposable container, gloves, methylated spirits and a new container to put the methylated spirits in. As you can see, uh, obviously don't go to the gym anymore. Now this will, this will require at least two or three baths of methylated spirits to clean off the terps before we wipe down the chain and we just give it a quick dry with the blow dryer and then it will be fully prepped for the wax. Okie dokies, time to do the final clean of the chains before they get put into the wax. I'm gonna take the chains out of the, the bottle that we use for methylated spirits. Just gonna lay them out and just do a bit of pat, a pat down. Get any excess liquid off. Now we'll give it a quick once over with a hairdryer. 
to dry it out. Since methylated spirits is majority alcohol, using that hair dryer there will evaporate all that very quickly and they'll become perfectly clean. Now for the fun part, which is melting the wax. You'll need something to hold up your chains while they're in the wax. And a lot of people online say, just repurpose a wire coat hanger. So I've got my wire coat hanger here and I am just twisting it to undo it. And you need to make a U shape that'll fit within your slow cooker. Slow cooker is only about this wide. So I'm gonna bend it here. Okay, I'm going to attempt to cut the deformed end off this. Oh, that was easier than I thought. So there we go. We've got two things now to hold our chains and I'm gonna thread them through very carefully now. I might put one at a time in because it actually looks quite full there, but I will put this one on the coat hanger. I'm gonna leave that for about 10 minutes and come back and see if it's melted in. If it needs, looks like I might need a bit more wax, in which case I will put more in. All right, wax is fully melted. Let's give it a little swish. There we go. Little swish around. Oops, sorry. Let it, just gonna let it drip dry for a few seconds. Just gonna bend in here so I can stick it up on this little hanger. And I've put a cloth underneath just to catch any dripping wax just in case. So this one here, this side has been hanging up for a while. The last thing we need to do before we put on the bike is we need to just break up the hard wax. So you can see right now it's actually completely stiff. So I'm just gonna, as I take it off, then I'll just snap each link. And you can do this over a piece of I've heard you can do it over a piece of PVC pipe or something. That's actually very, very stiff. So that might need a bit more agitating. All right, so I've got two chains. One of them is completely brand new. The other one is cut the size. So right now I'm gonna do a little exercise of making them the same length. Here's our wax chains. My friend has brought over his chain breaker and I'm gonna put the two chains alongside each other just to check the length of them. And then we'll know how much to cut. All right, so we're just gonna push out the pin now to make the chain the correct length. Perfecto. All right, now I'm gonna put the master link back in. Put one in that way. This one in the other way. All right, last thing to do is to put the new jockey wheels on. So I've got some brand new ones here and use a three millimeter Allen key to take out the old ones. I'm gonna clean out the derailleur cage and just make sure everything is spick and span. One thing to note is that the jockey wheels will have an indication of the direction they're meant to spin on them. So make sure you put them in the right way. Let's put the chain back on. Remembering that we put it on small at the front, small at the back. Now the first few times that we ride the bike, the chain will be quite stiff and you'll need to let it set in a little bit. Now that quick link there is not fully activated yet, so I need to give it a good hard yank. All right, if you've watched this video all the way to the end, thank you so much for sticking around. I hope that this was informative to you and the tips and tricks in here helps you convert to wax as well. So. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. Right now, my goal is to get to a thousand subscribers. I'm almost there. I feel so close. I'm like 750. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate if you could subscribe. Also remember, I'm doing that 99 bikes giveaway. So there's two $100 vouchers. 
comment down below whether you use wax or lube and the reason why, don't worry, I don't judge. Uh, I'd love to see some of your responses there. So before I close out this video, I'm just gonna do a quick fire pros and cons. So here's my cons. Cons, more upfront cost, more time dedicated to get the whole system up and running. You need a bit more room uh, opposed to you know, what your normal cleaning activities would be. So you need somewhere to store your, your crock pot and your, your different, different chemicals. Pros, better longevity of components, which will probably save you money in the long run. Your cleaning process is super, super easy now. If you wanna clean the wax off, just use some hot water. But if the wax on your chain is clean, which it should be, is you can just dunk it straight back into the crock pot. The third one, supposedly it has better drivetrain efficiency. So I will always say yes to more free watts. <laughs> I can't complain about that. And probably one of the underrated ones for me is uh, without having a dirty chain, I don't have white dogs that rub up against it and get themselves with all these black marks on them. So that's one for me personally. Anyway, thank you so much for watching the video. Stick around for a little bit more. I've put together some bloopers just to show you that I'm an actual beginner and I'm not an expert at all. I made plenty of mistakes while making this video and I hope you enjoy. Anyway, see you next one. Bye. Squeeze so it's hard. All right, so the wax is still melting. It's actually taken quite a while. I should have looked up how to use this first. Thanks, Wilbur. Oh my. This needs to be like link perfect, right? I think that's it there. Okay, this is not gonna work. Why? Because this one's an inner link. Well, actually, I'm not sure if it's gonna work, not, not work, but like, this one's an inner link and this one's the outer link. So if I break this one. Okay, I, it's it just because I've got them around the wrong way. Okay. Yeah, there we go. We're good. We're good. Yeah. We're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Oh, I was worried I may have bent the inner link. I'm pretty. I did. Like this. This outer link is a bit bent. Cause I think I yanked it like an ape. That's alright. There we go.